in Garden City. They've been playing lacrosse since 1934. And this season, the defending state champs are off to another stellar start. Manhasset is Long Island's oldest program. They've been playing since 1932 and are one goal shy of being undefeated as well. Tonight, the two meet for the 135th time. News 12 Varsity presents the Hospital for Special Surgery Game of the Week. Tonight from Ed Walsh Field in Manhasset, it's the nation's longest continuous rivalry in high school lacrosse. The 2019 edition of the Woodstick Classic, the Garden City Trojans versus the Manhasset Indians. Hello again, everyone. Lou Brogdo with you on the call. Glad you could join us here from Manhasset on a beautiful April evening. Perfect for, as we mentioned, the 135th meeting between these two legendary programs. Garden City off to a tremendous start. The defending state champs are 12-0. and Manhasset has lost just once this year. That lost by one goal to St. Anthony's, so they're just one goal away from being undefeated themselves. These two teams can find the back of the net as well. Manhasset just a shade under 14 goals per game. Garden City 12 and a half per contest as well. And both of these teams are ranked within the top five in the state, according to Max Preps. Tremendous Division I talent on the field for both teams here tonight. Garden City features a tremendous senior attacker in James Basile. He's heading to the University of Vermont, has 21 goals and 14 assists on the year. Defensively, Danny Bocafolo leads a stellar defense. He's heading to Cornell. On the other side for Manhasset, Louis Perfetto's having a terrific year. The Boston University bound senior attacker is a leader of this team, an all county performer, quarterback of this team, if you will, a multi sport performer, outstanding athlete who led the Indians to the county basketball final. He's got 23 goals and nine assists. And Ed Arnold heading to the University of Pennsylvania, their senior captain on the defensive side, an All-American, always in the middle of the fray. He's got 10 ground balls on the year for the Indians. So we are just moments away from what should be a tremendous lacrosse game. Manhasset going up against Garden City for the 135th time. Garden City coming in undefeated. Manhasset 9-1. And, and the opening faceoff just moments away here on News 12 Varsity. Welcome back to one of the great high school sporting events in the Tri-State area, the Woodstick Classic. Lou Brogno with you, of course, and Amanda Puglisi, of course, down on the sidelines. Amanda? Lou, these are two programs and these are two communities that really love their lacrosse, and if you ask anyone, they'll probably tell you this is the best rivalry in the country as well, and that's what today is all about. Today is all really like a festival at atmosphere. This, everything started at 10 a.m. this morning with the JV girls and boys lacrosse. Then they had an alumni game at one the varsity girls play with Manhasset winning that one nine to six at four o'clock and this one is the nightcap Lou the 135th Woodstick Classic looks like they're about to get started huge crowd on hand as you might expect the Trojans undefeated at 12 and 0 Manhasset nine up just one down and one of the keys in this game of course will be in the face-off circle and you have two of the be best face-off men in the nation going at it Justin Coppola for Garden City. And the faceoff is actually controlled by the Trojans. So Garden City has possession to get things going. They're in their road cherry maroon uniforms, if you will. And Manhasset in their home white with those metallic orange helmets sparkling in the sunshine. And you take a look at the keys to the game for Garden City. Well, win faceoffs. That's a huge key. Solid goalie play. They're going to look for Eric Muller to be tough between the pipes. And Garden City certainly wants to attack early. They want to get on the board, especially since they have won the last two games in this series. They you know, want to score early and make Manhasset question things a little early on. Here's the Indians' keys, control faceoffs have offensive discipline, which is what they're trying to display right now. And they're looking for a big game for their goalkeeper as well. Alex Racanelli, who has 26 saves on the year, a 59% save percentage. Manhasset in the attacking zone. We are just underway here in the first quarter. The Indians at nine and one, that only loss as we mentioned to St. Anthony's. 
They've had some big wins this year over Cold Spring Harbor, 14-9. Huge win over Darien, 10-5. That broke a five-game losing streak to Darien. Tough defense here by Garden City. And trying to get loose is Perfetto. He brings the pass all the way back outside. Chris Quinn gets around two defenders, fires, and it goes wide. So it will be Manhasset possession. This is Peter Lapina, the junior, headed to Bucknell. He's got 16 goals on the year. He's hit right in front of the crease, really crunched, and the ball sails. So the Indians reset behind the goal. Tough defense by the Trojans on this sequence. And Manhasset has to restart, comes all the way out. Aiden Mulholland, 17 goals on the year. Very talented young player. Back up top to Chris Glenn. Glenn fires and scores! Chris Glenn with his ninth goal of the year. And the Georgetown bound senior gives the Indians a one nothing lead. Here's Glenn gets around the defender. Danny Bocafolo was right with him, but Glenn able to get by him and he unleashed a bullet shot. So Manhasset gets off to the great start and they have a one nothing lead. Eric Muller, no chance on that one. Muller has had a very solid year, 63% save percentage. Of course, he replaced an outstanding goalie, Teddy Dolan, who graduated. So Muller's had a very solid season between the pipes, but no chance on that one from Glenn. So a great start for the Indians. They're up one to nothing with nine and a half remaining in the first. And that bright sunshine still shining right on the Face-off circle at midfield. Look at the physicality of the two teams trying to get that loose ball. The ball's still on the ground here on this face-off, and neither face-off man giving an inch. The ball still trapped in midfield, and I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this this figured to be an unbelievable face-off situation with Justin Coppola, who's heading to Villanova, the face-off man for Garden City. And finally, the ball comes loose and a legal procedure called. Manhasset comes out with it. Here's Nolan Garcia flipped around. Peter Lapina on the near side for the Indians. Flips it all the way up top. Manhasset with a one to nothing lead. That faceoff situation was amazing between Coppola and Mark Silos, the tremendous faceoff man for Manhasset. Indians work it around. This is Lapina. He comes up top, delivers there to Joe Maholland. Joe Maholland, the senior, flips it on the near side to Lapina. 7.25 remaining here in the first quarter. Manhasset with a 1 0 lead. Tough defense for Garden City. Billy Keppert there with some good stick checks. And more excellent defense up top by Colin Hart. Another Division I player heading to Brown. Joe Terenzi with possession here for Manhasset. 
Terenzi has 13 goals on the year. And he comes up top to Nolan Garcia. Manhasset, very cool and calm here offensively. Stall warning has been issued against the Indians. Here Perfetto flips it behind the goal. Nolan Garcia twirls his stick, tries a wraparound, brings it back up top. That shot stopped by Muller. Big save by Muller, and here comes Garden City. A chance to tie it up, the Trojans go on offense. Outside, Trevor Yaboa Cody with 27 goals on the year for the Trojans. Six assists as well. Another Division I player heading to Brown and Joe Scattereggia. 11 goals and 21 assists. He's heading to Bucknell. So much talent on both sides. That pass off the mark intended for Gavin Pappas, but the Trojans turn it over. Garden City at 12-0, their closest games the first two games of the year. Defeating Smithtown West 10-9 in overtime and Massapequa 8-7. Since then though, the Trojans really have steamrolled over their entire schedule. The man has it up by a goal. Five and a half remaining in the first. Indians bring it back outside. This is Aiden Mulholland. Mulholland makes a nice spin move. He fires low, and the save made by Eric Muller. And it's intercepted by Manhasset. Excellent defensive play by Chris Glenn. The shot bounces well in front of the crease. Michael Farrell winding up, but the senior bounced it into the turf. Manhasset does keep possession. Here's that last save by Miller. Beautifully done as he went low to scoop it up. Manhasset sets up. Farrell wheels it around. Indians have controlled possession here in this first quarter. Huge crowd on this cool April evening here for the 135th meeting between these two programs. Two programs that have been playing since the 1930s. First meeting between these two teams, 1935. And Mueller got his stick on that one. Able to deflect it. Chris Glenn's been very active offensively for Manhasset. Took that shot, but it was deflected wide. 420 remaining in the first quarter. The first quarter that really has been dominated by Manhasset. Here's Glenn. Gets around. Fires it low and Miller makes the save. Eric Miller's been sharp early on for Garden City. Ball saved on the far sideline and the ground ball picked up by the Trojans. Good job there by Danny Bocafola. So Garden City goes on offense. Ed Arnold comes over with a stick check. The senior captain, All-American defender for Manhasset. Trevor Yaboa Cody flips it on the near side. Played there by Jack Muldoon. And he comes back outside. Yaboa Cody up top. Gives to Skateregia. 3.20 remaining in the first. It's just a 1-0 Manhasset lead despite the big, despite the big edge in possession time for Manhasset. The Indians have just one goal to show for it. So Garden City can tie it up on this possession. Here's Gavin Pappas behind the goal. Gives the scatter in here. Being played there defensively by Ross Totora. Totora all over him on defense. Ross Totora, terrific defense, really causing havoc. Big check delivered, the ball loose on the turf. Still loose on the turf. 
Bodies colliding and a whistle finally blows and a timeout is called by Garden City. So the Trojans got momentary possession and they call an immediate timeout to keep possession with 2.36 remaining here in the first quarter and Manhasset up by the score of one to nothing. Well, as we said, a great start for both of these teams. Garden City 4-0 in Nassau Conference B, as are the Indians. Garden City undefeated overall, Manhasset 9-1. Hewlett, really the only team there that's got any kind of a shot to hang. They're 3-1 in the league at 8-3 overall. So it looks once again, as is usually the case, Garden City and Manhasset will buy for the conference title. Manhasset last week with a big win over Southside, a division game, 13 to three. They scored seven goals in the third quarter. It was four to two at halftime. And there's Garden City with their head coach, Steve Fiddle. In his 13th season, 214 wins. What a job he has done. What a job he has done with this program. Steve Fennell replaced the great legendary Doc Dockerty who coached at Garden City between 1974 and 2006. And Fennell's done just such a tremendous job with this program in 2012. They finished 22 and 0, number one in the nation. One of the great programs nationwide. Two thirty-six remaining here in this first quarter, and the Trojans do have possession. Trevor Yaboa Cody cranks it up, gets it right back as Gavin Pappas gives it to him, and Garden City only down by a goal. Jack Muldoon back up top to Pappas. Yaboa Cody, good delivery. Pappas fires, and it goes wide. Racanelli might have gotten a piece of it. And Garden City sets up again. Behind the goal, James Basile heading to UVM with 21 goals on the year. He's been a big offensive performer. Wraparound shot saved by Racanelli. And Manhasset has possession. Ball deflected, Indians looking to clear. Ed Arnold carries across midfield. Comes near side to Mahalan. Aiden Mahalan presses ahead. Behind the goal, here's Chris Alcarez. A minute 20 remaining in the first. Chris Glenn. Shot goes wide. Chris Glenn, one minute left here in this first quarter in a very tough defensive first period of play. Alcarez, Manhasset showing great discipline offensively, which was one of the keys for head coach Keith Cromwell. Tough defense displayed by Boca Fola. Comes back outside. Michael Farrell gets in front, fires and scores. Farrell puts it home. The senior gives Manhasset a two nothing lead. Over the shoulder of Eric Mueller. Beautiful move by Farrell. 
Makes a nice move there, ducks away from the defender, then splits two defenders and goes up over the left shoulder, just inside the far side pipe. It's a two nothing lead for Manhasset. 21 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. Again, another tremendous face-off between Silos and Coppola. And it will be Manhasset possession. Glenn carries up. Less than 10 seconds remaining. Down to five. Glenn carries in, fires, and Mueller got his stick on it to deflect it. Just 1.7 remaining. Quick pass, sails out, and that will do it. Manhasset dominates the first quarter of play against undefeated Garden City. The Indians have a 2-0 lead. And a reminder that this tremendous game is brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics. With locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, the best is now nearby. Indians up by two on News 12 Varsity. We go to the second quarter. Manhasset leading by the score of two to nothing. All Manhasset in that first period. Indians controlling possession. G Garden City had very little offensive time. You take a look at the Garden City goalie, Eric Mueller, who saw a lot of action in that first period. So face-offs, a big key in that first period. Tremendous matchup between Justin Coppola headed to Villanova, the senior midfielder, face-off man for Garden City, and Mark Silos, tremendous face-off man for Manhasset. Silos, just a junior, and it is shoveled up ahead. Big collision, and still a lot of heavy hitting trying to pick up that ground ball. It goes out, and it will be Garden City possession. Basile flips it back to Trevor Yaboa Cody. Let's check in with Amanda. Lou, as you can imagine, Coach Vanell of Garden City not so excited, not so happy with the lack of possession, lack of time that his team had the ball, telling his guys, hey, guys, there's nothing to be nervous about. You know the Manhasset players. You've been playing against them since you've been six or seven. We need to play the way we're capable of. And then Joe Scattarigia piped up in that huddle telling his teammates, guys, we just need to be aggressive. Well, another, another turnover. Here's a shot. Score! Aiden Maholland fires it home after another Garden City turnover. And Manhasset has a 3-0 lead. One more time, Maholland with a tremendous move. He goes sidewinding just inside the pipe. So a great start for Manhasset. The Indians up by three. One minute gone by here in this second quarter. Garden City desperately trying to 
win a faceoff here. This Manhasset has repeatedly had possession. Balls loose on the ground. And Silos picks it up. So Manhasset again has it. Here's Farrell. Flips it to the side of the goal. This Manhasset team, a team that really is built for this year. They have 18 seniors on the team. And that shot knocked away from behind and an errant pass comes all the way back to midfield. And that'll be offside called. Garden City quickly goes on offense. The Trojans in need of a goal. They're down three nothing. Just haven't been able to get their offense going at all. Regia moves in, takes it behind the goal, now side of the crease. Looking for a cutter, but not much movement by the Trojans in front. He still carries, and the senior brings it back outside. He's got a Regia to Yaboa Cody. Yaboa Cody gets a rounded defender. Finds an opening and sc scores! Trevor Yaboa Cody, his 28th of the season. A laser shot. And Garden City is on the board. It's three to one. Watch this shot by Yaboa Cody. A line drive. No chance for Racanelli. For the Brown bound, Trevor Yaboa Cody is 28th score of the year. And a huge one as it breaks the ice for Garden City. And now the Trojans have another possession, a chance to cut the deficit to one. It's three to one Manhasset. Three minutes gone by, second quarter. Yaboa Cody angles left side. Gives near side to Christian Sullivan. That skips off of the stick of Yaboa Cody. But Garden City able to keep possession. Good hustle by Gavin Pappas to pick up that ground ball. Pappas brings it back outside. Ed Yaboa Cody moves against Jack Orlando, the all-conference senior defender for Manhasset. Christian Sullivan makes a move, but tough defense on him. Stefano Troya of Manhasset all over Sullivan. A seal behind the goal. There's a flag, our first penalty of the game. Ball is knocked away, and we will have our first penalty of the contest. Against Manhasset, Garden City. One minute, man up advantage for the Trojans. It's a slash called against John Whalen. So Garden City with a big opportunity here. A one minute man up advantage, 7.35 remaining in the second quarter.
Trojans wheel it around. Yaboa Cody, good pass. Basile takes the shot, and the save made by Racanelli. And Manhasset gets possession. So a big defensive sequence for the Indians there. And they have a chance to kill off this penalty. Manhasset trying to clear. Sent up ahead to Glenn. And he has it knocked away from behind by Boca Fola. Excellent defensive play. Scatterigia has it, comes across to Basile. Yaboa Cody comes back with the pass to Jack Muldoon. Teams are even now as the penalty has expired as the shot goes wide. Little underhand shot by Will Puccio. He's got 23 scores on the year for the Trojans. And a timeout called by Manhasset. Six minutes, 18 seconds remaining here in this second quarter. And the Indians right now up by two. They lead it three to one. Well, Manhasset coming in nine and one on the year. It's been a stellar season for the Indians. They're only lost to St. Anthony's by the score of 10 to nine. You see, they started off the season with a win over Kellenberg and John Jay, then a big win over Cold Spring Harbor by the score of 14 to nine. The lone loss to St. Anthony's but since then, they have reeled off six straight wins, defeating Long Beach by 13. Hewlett, Darien, a big win over Darien by the score of 10 to five. That broke a five game losing streak to Darien. Aiden Mulholland with a hat trick in that contest. And they have continued their winning ways. Glad you could join us on this Saturday night for the Woodstick Classic, one of the great sporting events in the tri-state area. Two of the legendary high school lacrosse programs in the nation. Manhasset has been playing high school lacrosse since 1932. They were the first high school lacrosse program on Long Island. Two years later, Garden City began their high school lacrosse program in 1934. And the two teams have been playing against each other since 1935. Not just a lacrosse game, it's a happening here. Garden City possession, Trojans are down by two. Yaboa Cody comes up top. Good ball movement by Garden City. Scatteregia comes on the near side. Yaboa Cody. Shot save made by Racanelli. It went down low with his stick. Beautiful stop. Garden City gets possession though on the rebound. Yaboa Cody wanted to pull that trigger. Instead goes back out to Jack Muldoon. Five minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Manhasset with a three to one lead. Very patient offensive possession here for the Trojans. Basile gets around a defender, gets a little bit of a screen. But Manhasset does a good job to react defensively and slide. There's Muldoon, now backs it away. As Troya bounces up on him defensively. 
Long possession here for Garden City. Muldoon makes a nice spin to move. Fires low, and it's deflected in front. And the ground ball picked up by Manhasset. Timothy Barrett. Garden City gets it back. And now, let's see, the official calling Yaboa Cody back to reset. Here it is one more time. Big hit by Trevor Yaboa Cody. Vicious check, knocks the ball loose. Basile with the pass, trying to find the cutting. Gavin Pappas in front of the goal. But the Trojans toss it away, and Manhasset gets it back. 3.45 remaining here in this second quarter. 3-1, to one, Manhasset. Manhasset sets up, up top. Here's Kepa. Rather, Chris Glenn. Manhasset, very patient here. Just moving the ball around up top. Joe Terenzi and Glenn is kind of playing catch here. Terenzi being played defensively by Fort Carney. Carney slides over on him. They hand it off to Lapina. Lapina in front, and the save made by Mueller. Mueller with the save, Lapina the shooter. And quickly, Garden City flying up the field. Colin Hart delivers a pass on the far side, and the Trojans set up. Christian Sullivan walks it up. Less than two minutes now left first half here in this Woodstick Classic. It has been a physical, tough defensive first half of play. Manhasset with a three to one lead. Holden over Beck for Garden City. Comes on the near side to Sullivan. And at 20 remaining here, the first half. And that pass misses its target intended for Yaboa Cody. He desperately tries to get possession, bangs it up ahead, and it will be Garden City possession as Manhasset could not get to the loose ball. A minute five remaining. One minute, one minute in the second period. Down to 45 seconds left here. Garden City trying to slice that deficit to one. Yaboa Cody fighting around two defenders. Troya all over him defensively. It comes on the near side now to Sullivan. Down to 30 seconds left in the first half. Christian Sullivan backs it up. Totora on him defensively. Sullivan still with it. 15 seconds. Sullivan wraps around. Knocked away. Great defense by Ross Totora. And the ball knocked away and out. Garden City retains possession. Three seconds, two, one. Basile feeds in front. The shot whistles up high. And Manhasset charges off the field. Led by Alex Racanelli. Fired up. His team up by two. 
The Indians lead it three to one here at the half. Tough defensive first half controlled by the Indians. And this Woodstick Classic is brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics with locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The best is now nearby. Our score at halftime, Manhasset three, Garden City one on News 12 Varsity. Welcome back to Manhasset, where the Indians lead undefeated Garden City by the score of 3-1 to one here in the 135th meeting between these two legendary high school lacrosse programs. So Manhasset up by two here at halftime. Lou Brogno with you, of course, and Amanda Puglisi down on the sidelines. Amanda? So it is no surprise, and everybody I think knows that Manhasset and Garden City, the athletes here, they're used to playing in the big moments. And as we're gonna find out with the latest scholar athlete on Long Island, as the News 12 Long Island crew is about to introduce us to, this player as well is used to the big moments. It's time to meet our latest News 12 Scholar Athlete Award winner sponsored by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. He's West Hampton Beach High School senior Liam McIntyre, a captain on the football and wrestling teams. Liam says he's got talent, but it doesn't match his work ethic. If you're not doing the most, there's some guy somewhere else that, that is doing the most. So you have to be on top of your game and be working all the time to be the best. And that's what I want to do. I want to be the best. As a wrestler, Liam was just that, finishing his career with 171 wins, most in school history. And he made his mark on the football field as well, winning the Hanson Award as the best player in Suffolk County, running for more than 900 yards and scoring 15 touchdowns. In 2017, Liam helped the Hurricanes win their first Long Island championship. And seven years earlier, he watched on the sidelines as the Bellport Clippers won an LIC, which left quite the impression on Liam. To me at that point, yeah, like it, was, it was like the NFL to me. The guys were so big and so talented that I was like, this is insane. Like, how could I ever be that size, that kind of kid? And a couple years later, all of a sudden, I'm playing one myself. In the classroom, Liam scored a 1290 on his SAT and has a 92 grade point average. He'll be studying and playing football at LIU Post in the fall. And like all of our winners, Liam gets a $1,000 scholarship from Beth Page Federal Credit Union. I'm Jamie Stewart. Liam McIntyre, just the ultimate competitor, whether it's on the wrestling mat, on the field, or as we're learning, even in the classroom, Lou. Yeah, Amanda, tremendous job by Liam, as you said, both in the classroom and on the playing field as well. Here at halftime in Manhasset, the Indians lead it by the score of three to one here in the longest continuing high school lacrosse rivalry in the nation. Indians up by two, second half upcoming soon here on News 12 Varsity. We are at halftime here in Manhasset. The Indians leading Garden City by the score of three to one. And the Indians getting off to a, a great start in this one. Manhasset was able to score first. Good offensive play by Manhasset up top. And it was Chris Glenn who lit it up for the Indians. He goes just inside the far side pipe and gives Manhasset an early one nothing lead. Tremendous goalkeeping by Eric Mueller. He kept the score at that point for a good portion of that first half and another good save at the other end by Alex Racanelli. Then it was Michael Farrell with a brilliant move around two defenders as he goes up over the shoulder of Eric Mueller. And then on the wraparound, here is Aiden Mulholland with a blistering shot, puts it just inside the pipe. Trevor Yaboa Cody finally gets Garden City on the board with a blazing laser beam shot. Beautiful save once again by Racadelli, who had several brilliant stops. And Mueller with a stick save there to keep Manhasset from increasing their lead. The Indians lead up by the score of three to one. Take a look at the last six meetings between these two teams. Of course, last year in the playoffs, it was all Garden City as they won it by the score of 15 to five at the B final. Then Manhasset in the regular season, well, they won seven to four to the Indians. Garden City the previous year again in the playoffs, it was an eight six victory for the Trojans, 10 eight in the regular season for Manhasset. So that's the kind of way it kind of went the last two years. In 2016, it was a sweep by the Trojans as they won seven to five 
and nine to seven. Garden City has won four of the last six meetings between these two teams. And as we mentioned, in case you're just joining us, these two teams have met since 1935, sometimes twice a season, as you've seen over the last couple of years between the Trojans and the Indians. Well, the second half is just moments away here in this Woodstick Classic. Right now, Manhasset is enjoying a two-goal lead. The Indians are up by the score of 3-1 to one here on News 12 Varsity. We are back here at Manhasset where the Indians lead it by the score of 3-1. to one. Manhasset looking to win their 10th game of the season in hand Garden City. Their first loss of the season. Trojans coming in undefeated at 12 and 0. In fact, Garden City hasn't even had a close game since the beginning of the season. The first two games in the middle of March. Knows, take a look at Alex Racanelli coming into this game with 26 saves, a 59% save percentage. He has been on the money so far here tonight. He's made several marvelous saves. And his counterpart at the other end, Eric Mueller, also has been outstanding coming in with a 63 percent save percentage he's made a couple of tremendous saves as well garden city of course the defending state champions defeating victor last year in the new york class b championship game by the score of seven to six in that game james basile scoring with two seconds left delivering the trojans to an exhilarating state championship they finished last year 18 and 3 their first state championship since 2013 so garden city on the heels of that state title and there's a look at manhasset who won the long island championship in 2015 and they won class c titles in fact you can see on the other side of the field, they have the banners hanging up. Class B champions in 95, 04, 09, and 2010. Great legacy for both programs with a lot of tremendous seasons. Under head coach, there's a look at those banners on the other side. 22 Nassau County titles for Garden City and Manhattan. 16 Nassau County titles. 13 Long Island titles for Manhasset. Four New York State titles for the Indians. We mentioned those titles and Manhasset. Many years under head coach Bill Cherry, now under Keith Cromwell. Let's check in with Amanda. Lou, I spoke to both coaches at halftime, and as you can expect, the conversation had a lot to do with possession. Coach Finnell telling me that we hardly had the ball in that first quarter, so he says he felt like his team played much better in the second quarter but really just comes down to getting those nerves out he says I don't know why but it seemed like my team was playing a little nervous playing a little tight so it's all about just loosening up and playing the way that we're capable of playing and coach Cromwell telling me of his Indians that it's all about moving without the ball they dominated time of possession in that first quarter but really just like coach Fennell was saying Garden City had the ball for a lot in that second quarter Coach Cromwell wants to see his players really push the ball, play in transition. If it's not there, though, take it out, wear down Garden City. He says we need to work for a good shot. We need to move without the ball. And really, we just have to, like I said, wear them down. Well, Coach Crom Cromwell, Keith Cromwell in his third season at the helm of Manhasset. And you take a look at the Trojans of Garden City. Steve Finnell has had nine 20 win seasons. Just a phenomenal record with the Trojans throughout the years. 20 plus win seasons to be more accurate. And on the other side, Keith Cromwell, a tremendous player, three time All American at Rutgers University, where he played under the great head coach Tom Hayes, Hall of Famer. All time leading scorer at Rutgers still stands with that record 152 goals, 266 points, Cromwell. Played in the NLL, MLL, Long Island Lizards, of course. And he's got a, a team this year that has state championship aspirations. They are 9-1 and one and leading the defending state champs right now by the score of 3-1. to one. But there's a long way to go. Whole second half of play here in front of a huge crowd on a cool April evening. 
And we'll start the second half with another great face-off situation here. Justin Coppola going for Garden City and Mark Silos for Manhasset. Look at these two guys going at it. And Silos wins another face-off for the Indians. Great outlet pass up ahead to Glenn. Here's an opportunity. The shot whistles high over the crossbar. Manhasset had it set up, and the Indians do keep possession. We are just underway in the third quarter. Manhasset with a three to one lead. Manhasset carries behind the goal. This is Perfetto, takes the shot on a wraparound. Perfetto looked like he got whacked in the ribs as he took that shot. He is doubled over, intercepted by Manhasset. Tremendous play by Terenzi. And then Garden City able to knock it loose. Fierce fight, scramble for that loose ball, shoveled up ahead and out. So Manhasset will get it back as the Trojans could not come up with that ground ball. 10 minutes, 54 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And the Indians a chance to add to their lead. Lapina. Manhasset works it around. Up top is Glenn. Chris Glenn with a goal earlier in this game for Manhasset. Glenn knocked away there defensively by Boca Fola. Shot, bounces in front of the goal, and then up over the crossbar. Lapina puts the brakes on, brings it up ahead to Perfetto who took the shot. And went down as he took the shot again. Comes back outside. Manhasset still has possession. Here's Glenn. Mentioned earlier, Manhasset has won the last two regular season meetings against Garden City. The Trojans have gotten the Indians in the postseason, in the playoffs. And Hassett trying to continue that trend. They're up by three. Excuse me, by two. It's three to one. Looking to go up by three. Pass in front, and a beautiful pass leads to a goal. Perfetto puts it in, his 24th of the year. And a great pass from Lapina. Watch Lapina, great look. Ah, oh, beautiful delivery into Perfetto. And the Boston University attack man puts it home. Boston University bound attack man Perfetto with his 24th score of the year. Manhasset indeed has a three goal lead. They're up four to one. Garden City trying to get it going here with 9.20. Six remaining here in the third quarter. Another st stalemate here on this faceoff. Finally shoveled away by Silos, but picked up by the Trojans. Okafola picking up that ground ball. Here comes Garden City on a fast break opportunity. And Hassett gets back defensively. Basile back pedals. Ross Tutora on him defensively. Outside it goes to Coppola. And he hands it off to 
Scanner Regia. Here comes Muldoon. Good ball movement here by Garden City. The shot goes wide though. Taken by Basile, frustrated after that shot. Eight and a half remaining in the third. It's a 4-1 lead for Manhasset. Gavin Pappas wraps around. Picked up defensively by John Whalen. Whalen on Pappas. Whalen, couple of big stick checks. And Arigia trying to wrap around. He does, takes the shot, it goes wide. Got Arigia, the shooter, shot wide. Lost to Tora again in. on him defensively. Now Whelan trying to harass Pappas behind the goal. Whelan on Pappas. Comes back outside. Up top to Scatterigia. Boa Cody hands it off. Garden City very patient here. They have plenty of time. There's seven and a half remaining here in the third quarter, but they're down by three. Just can't find a crack in that Manhasset defense. The cause turnover. Indians defense stellar so far in this game, and you have an injured Manhasset player down behind the goal, so time has been called. Clock stops with 7.14 remaining here in this third quarter. And concern for a Manhasset player down. And Alex Racanelli, who has been tremendous tonight in the crease for the Indians. That was one of the keys coming in, according to his head coach, Keith Cromwell. He needed Racanelli to be sharp tonight in between the pipes, and he certainly has been. Player shaken up for Manhasset is Ed Arnold. And hopefully nothing serious for the Manhasset captain, an All-American defender, heading Ivy League, be heading to Philadelphia to play for the Penn Quakers. So many tremendous scholar athletes on both teams. A lot of these players going to outstanding collegiate institutions, They're doing it in the classroom as well as on the lacrosse field. Basile behind the goal. Close defense for the Indian number 16, Brian. Basile Mack. with a nice move, but could not shake the defender, Brian Mack of Manhasset. Basile still with possession. Now draws a double team, brings it back outside, and delivers up top. Jack Muldoon played there by Troya. Six and a half remaining here in the third. Still four to one, Manhasset. Muldoon with the ball for Garden City, marked by Troya of the Indians. Muldoon still played by Troya, who delivers a couple of stiff checks. Yaboa Cody picked up excellent defense by Troya, who slid over to pick up Yaboa Cody. Now delivers a check. Yaboa Cody fires and scores. Trevor Yaboa Cody, who had Troya blanketed on him defensively, still able to put the ball in the net. Another blazing shot. Watch his shot by Trevor Yaboa Cody. Bam, 
just unleashes. No chance for Racanelli. And a big goal for Garden City as the Trojans cut the deficit to two. It's four to two, Manhasset. Just a little over halfway gone by here in this third quarter. Manhasset again wins the faceoff. Silos brings it up. He has been superb, superb here tonight. Flips it over to Lapina. And now the Indians set up. And has it with possession and a two goal lead. Michael Farrell, who has a score here tonight for the Indians. Farrell gets around his defender and then tried to unleash a pass in front. Looked like he was going to take the shot. Instead, he tried to deliver a pass to Alcarez. They call that a shot. Uh, I'm not sure about that. And it is awarded to Garden City. Trojans down by two. Look to clear it. Tough defense on the far sideline, but they do get it across, does Will Puccio. Here's Basile. Comes back outside to Yaboa Cody. The shot whistles up over the crossbar. Taken by Holden Overbeck who has four goals on the year. 4.35 remaining in the third. And has it with a 4-2 to two lead. Overbeck way up top near midfield. Directs traffic here a little bit. Nice move by Overbrook, but that Great shot deflects out. Racanelli got a piece of it. The seal wraps around. Nowhere to go. Brings the pass way outside. Slipping down is Pappas. Picks it back up. The ball is loose. And the ground ball picked up by Manhasset. Ross Totora with a big ground ball there for the Indians. Let's check in with Amanda with that injury update. Lou, a few minutes ago, we saw Ed Arnold. He actually ran into the locker room with the trainer. He is now back. It seems like it's a upper right arm. They wrapped it up. He came on. His teammates were waiting for him, had his stick ready to go. So it looks like he is back and feeling much better. Well, that's certainly good news. Ed Arnold, as we said, just an outstanding defensive player. Love to get him back there on the field if possible. Captain of this Manhasset team. Two fifty remaining in the third. Indians with possession and a two-goal lead. That ball skips off the stick of Lapina, and it will be Garden City possession. No, they say loose ball push. So back to Manhasset. It's fortunate to get that back. See if they can take advantage of it here. Chris Glenn, way up top for Manhasset. To 
kicking down towards the two minute mark left in the third. Terenzi splits two defenders, flips it behind the goal. That shot in! Peter Lapina goes low and nearly grounds that one in past Eric Mueller. And he gives Manhasset once again a three goal lead. Watch how low Lapino goes with this one. He bounces it in. Hugging the turf. So the Bucknell bound Peter Lapina with a huge goal. And he gives his team once again a three goal cushion. They're up five to two with a minute 41 remaining in the third. This time, Garden City wins the faceoff. Great ball movement and the save made by Racanelli. Maybe his best of the night. Garden City was set up after winning the faceoff. Huge hit on the sideline and a timeout called by Manhasset. Here's the save by Racanelli. Goes up high and makes the stop. That one might have been targeted just underneath the crossbar. And then a huge hit on the near sideline. But with the Indians keeping possession, they were able to get the timeout. There's a great look at those metallic orange helmets of Manhasset. They are glistening under the lights here on this Saturday night. And so far, Manhasset glistening with tremendous defense and great goalkeeping by Alex Racanelli. So Manhasset with a three goal advantage. They lead it by the score of five to two. Garden City undefeated on the season coming into this game. The defending state champs have been rolling all season long. Had a couple of close games at the very outset of the season but since then they've been on a roll tonight they're going up against a very tough defensive physical Manhasset team a team that has just one loss on the year and that was the St. Anthony's by one goal they lost 10 to 9 so they're just one goal away from being undefeated themselves This is the 135th meeting between these two great programs. Quinn will bring it in for the Indian. Peter Lapina brings it back outside to Glenn. And has it with possession and a three goal lead. One minute, One minute, minute left in the third. This is a huge possession really for both teams. And Hassett can figure out a way to score here. They could go up by four, heading into the fourth. Thirty-five seconds left in the third quarter. the moment and has it very patient offensively 20 seconds now left let's see when the Indians make their move pass comes up top here's Glenn Glenn double teamed five seconds pass goes behind the goal in front Ball gets loose, and they will not get a shot off, and the third quarter will come to an end. One more quarter to go in this great rivalry game between the Indians and the Trojans. Manhasset 
will head to the fourth with the lead. They're up by the score of five to two. And this game brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics. With locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, the best is now nearby. Manhasset up five to two on News 12 Varsity. To the fourth quarter we go here at Manhasset where the Indians lead it by the score of five to two. Let's check in with Amanda who's down on the sidelines. Amanda. Coach Finnell was just telling his teammates, or just telling his players, rather, we have 12 minutes left in this game. I don't want to get on the bus in 12 minutes and be thinking, would have, should have, could have. We are so much better than this. He says, guys, we are capable of putting up seven points in a quarter, but we need to play the way that we normally play. We need to play loose. We need to play fast. And every loose ball, at least on the offensive side, he says, we need to come up with that ball. We need to sling it around. We really need to work for good shots. But again, just telling his team, we are so much better than the way that we've been playing the first three quarters. Well, the Trojans with a hill to climb if they want to remain undefeated. They come in at 12-0 on the year, and the defending state champions are down by three. It's 5-2, to two. Manhasset. Manhasset trying to make a big statement here if they can knock off the undefeated Trojans. Garden City will have the first offensive possession of quarter number four. Driving ahead, Justin Coppola takes it behind the goal and flips it back outside to Trevor Yaboa Cody. He comes all the way up top. And Garden City wants to play fast and loose, but Manhasset has not allowed that defensively. The Indians have just been stifling defensively against this Garden City offensive attack. Here's a shot that bounces wide of the goal. Shot was deflected from behind. Again, nice stick check delivered there by the Indians. Jack Muldoon up top. And has it sliding very effectively defensively. Over, over a minute gone by here in the fourth. Here's a pass that slides off the stick of Muldoon. And Manhasset quickly the other way. They get it across. Indians bring it up quickly as Troya was flying across midfield. The Perfetto on the near side for the Indians. Goes across to Farrell. Garden City already down three. Can ill afford to give up much more. Manhasset. Goal by the Indians here on this possession would make it pretty tough for the Trojans. Especially the way Manhasset has played defensively and with the way Racanelli has been really stifling in between the pipes. Terenzi up top. Gets a big check delivered there from Pierce Archer. Another big hit. Garden City able to knock the ball loose. Picked up by Manhasset. Shot score! <laughs> Off the ground ball. Put in by Joe Terenzi. A huge goal. His 14th of the year. And the Indians take a 6-2 lead. Here's that hit again. The ball loose on the ground. But look at the ground ball scooped up by Manhass Manhasset's Terenzi. And then he was all alone in front of the crease. Really no chance for Eric Mueller. And Terenzi gives his team a four-goal lead. They're up 6-2. to two. With 9.28 remaining here in the fourth. Still time for Garden City, as Amanda mentioned earlier. Trojans are explosive. 
But one of the keys is winning faceoffs, and that is something Garden City has not really been able to do consistently and effectively here tonight. The Silos has done a tremendous job, but now the Trojans do get possession. Good job by Coppola as he's able to take it away from Silos. Garden City taking their time here to set it up. Here's Yaboa Cody. He's got Regia on the near side to Muldoon. Trojans are down by four. So no panic time yet, but it certainly would be beneficial to them to pick up the pace here offensively. Got a read here. Double teamed. Nowhere to go. Again, great defense by Totora. Totora comes out on him, delivers a check. Here's a shot. That's up high. Air mailed that one up over the crossbar. Gavin Pappas had a good look. Wraparound shot is deflected. For Garden City, realizing they've got to get some shots off. Basile backs it up. Shot, score, bounces in. Under the crossbar. Scatterigia with the goal. His 12th of the season. A big one there. And Garden City cuts into that deficit. Joe Scatterigia goes low and bounces it between the five hole. Beats Racanelli that time. So that draws the Trojans to within three. It's six to three with 7.47 remaining in the fourth quarter. Still plenty of time. Justin Coppola and Mark Silo. Silos and Coppola getting ready to do battle one more time. Another great stalemate here between these two. Ball scooped up by Silos, picked up by Garden City, and they call a timeout. So the Trojans got possession, and Steve Fennell calls the timeout. So Garden City, down by three, will have possession. And they'll look for a good offensive sequence here. Manhasset coming in, nine up, one down on the season. Garden City undefeated at 12 and 0. Trojans, the defending New York Class B champions. That thrilling victory over Victor last year by the score of seven to six. Garden City has been steamrolling all season long. But you figure this could be the first of perhaps two meetings for sure between these two teams. Steve Finnell, you mentioned earlier, he's had 920 win seasons. Could be on his way to another one here. With his team already 12 0 on the season. And a big one here, Peter Lupina. 
A junior has been a big contributor tonight Always for Manhasset. Is the annual Red Rock Classic to Jimmy Regan Lacrosse Day of Champions. This year it will be held in Minneapolis. Great traditions throughout the years for these two two, two programs, Garden City. It's been playing lacrosse since 1934, Manhasset since 32. This series has been played since 35. So many great players have participated. Of course, Manhasset, the home of the great legendary Jim Brown. Big hit delivered and a flag flies. So we've got a delayed penalty. Garden City picks it up. Here come the Trojans, Yaboa Cody cutting through the defense. Takes it behind the goal. Garden City playing with house money here. Yaboa Cody tries to take a shot and now the whistle blows. So it'll be a man up advantage for the Trojans. It's a 30-second technical foul penalty. And John Whalen heads over to the box. Man-up situation for the Trojans. Opportunity here, down by three. Yaboa Cody fires and Racanelli might have gotten a piece of it with his stick. Garden City gets it back. Trojans come up top. There's a shot and another save by Racanelli. The rebound shot is deflected in front. Picked up by Yaboa Cody. Here's Basile. The penalty has expired, so both teams are at even strength. More than halfway through this fourth quarter now. UVM bound Basile, James Basile. Yaboa Cody. Takes a big check and is forced back outside by Totora. Shot score! Big goal by Scatterigia. He draws Garden City to within two. It's now a six to four game with 5.15 remaining here in the fourth. Scatterigia just kind of lulled the defense to sleep there. You saw Racadelli kind of throw his eyes up to the sky afterwards. Thought he should have had that one. Tough shot, though, by Scatterigia. So with 5.15 remaining in the fourth, Garden City right back in it. They're down by two. It's six to four. Another key face off here. And it's won by Coppola. Flag flies. I have a penalty here. And again, this is gonna be against Manhasset, I believe. It's gonna give for a 30 second hold. 30 second hold. Man opportunity for the Trojans. It's a man up and an opportunity for the Trojans. So Garden City here with a big chance to cut the deficit to one. Joins the man down defense for the Indians.
Yaboa Cody flips it around Basile. Good ball movement here as the Trojans wheel it around. Muldoon comes outside, here's the shot, score! Just under the crossbar. So Garden City is down by just one. Big fourth quarter for the Trojans. And a brilliant shot by Gavin Pappas. Pappas coming into the game with 25 goals, nine assists. He draws Garden City to within one. It's now a 6-5 game with an eternity left. Four minutes and 43 seconds left on the clock. And this call goes against Manhasset. Legal procedure. And Garden City a chance to tie it here on this possession. They were down by four. Big comeback by the undefeated defending state champion Trojans here in the fourth. Scatterigia takes the shot, saved by Racanelli. The rebound shoveled behind the goal. And it will be Manhasset possession. Huge save by Alex Racanelli. He has it here, trying to clear it. Flips it on the near side, finds Brian Mack back to the Manhasset goalkeeper. Mack gets it across midfield. He brings it up, shovels it back. Now Matt Hassett with possession, three minutes and 25 seconds remaining here in the fourth. The Indians hanging on to a one goal lead. Farrell to Glenn. Back to Terenzi. And Matt Hassett very patient here. Working some clock with that one goal lead. Two forty-five remaining. Terenzi. Two twenty-five remaining here in the fourth quarter. On Terenzi. Terenzi takes the check from Yaboa Cody. Door warning on Manhattan. This is Perfetto. Tried to keep it in the box. It was Perfetto being played defensively by Billy Kephart. Perfetto zips it back outside. Here's Glenn with a spin. The ball knocked away. Big check delivered by Garden City. And a timeout called by Manhasset. They're able to get the timeout as they had possession momentarily. Minute 58 remaining. Well, earlier this year, Garden City trailed Smithtown West. That was back on the 16th of March. And they were able to come back and win it by one goal. Gavin Pappas with the game tying goal there. And then the winning goal by Will Puccio as he put it in. And Garden City came all the way back from the deficit to win it by the score of 10-9 in overtime. So they are no strangers to comebacks here in this 2019 campaign. They have been able to come back here and whittle the deficit to one, but they have not climbed the mountain completely. And Hassett hoping that and trying to prevent them from doing so. 
And Hassett still keeping possession here with just under two minutes. As Steve Pinnell delivers some last minute thoughts to his team. On the other side, Keith Cromwell hoping to come up with one of the bigger wins he's had. Looking to def defeat the defending state champions who are off to an undefeated start here in this 2019 the season. The Trojans have won left. Look at Keith Cromwell. Very demonstrative there. Been a terrific game as you might have expected in the 135th meeting between these two teams. Manhasset possession. The permanent rule is in effect. So the Indians have it. And bring it up. Aiden Mulholland. This is Terenzi. A minute 35 left. Yaboa Cody on Terenzi. Garden City looking to create a turnover, get possession. Terenzi trying to keep it moving here, but he cannot get away from Yaboa Cody. Still has it. Now finally delivers a pass. Perfetto has it knocked away from him from behind. One minute. Perfetto still One has it. Regulation. Final minute of regulation here. Perfetto takes a stick check from behind. Perfetto still dodging, trying to get away from defenders. 45 seconds left here in regulation. Ball dumped, ball loose behind. The goal, still loose on the ground. Fierce fight for the ground ball, won by Perfetto, and it's flipped all the way back out towards midfield. Over and back, call. Over and back is the call. Garden City will have possession, and they have time. 28.9 seconds remaining. Trojans with possession, down to 20 seconds. It comes down to this. Garden City with a chance to tie it. Scatterigia goes up top. Yaboa Cody on the near side. Basile. Basile in front. He shoots. Save me by Bracanelli. Crease violation is called. Manhasset has possession. A flag is thrown. Flag is down. That's a delay of game. It's a delay of game call against Garden City. But pretty much all academic here. Racinelli coming up with the save here as Garden City had an opportunity to tie. And Hassett will have possession, but the clock will start, and the Indians will have a tremendous win. And that is it. Manhasset defeats Garden City by the score of six to five. The Indians go to 10 and one on the year and Garden City loses for the first time here in 2019 as the Trojans drop to 12 and one. Garden City mounted a furious comeback in the fourth quarter, but Manhasset holds on and the Indians 
have their biggest win here in 2019 in the 135th meeting. Manhasset defeats Garden City by one. And this great game brought to you by HSS, the number one hospital for orthopedics. With locations in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, the best is now nearby. Manhasset defeats Garden City by the score of six to five. We'll be back to talk about the Indians' great win in just a few moments on News 12 Varsity. Back in Manhasset where the Indians have defeated Garden City by the score of six to five. Tremendously physical, defensive-minded contest between these two great rivals. Manhasset had a four goal lead at one point and Garden City stormed back, but they fall short by one goal. Now, now time for the News 12 varsity play of the game. And it's Boston University bound Lewis Perfetto with the goal off a great pass from Lapina. Tremendous pass by Lapina who found Perfetto open in front and he puts it home. Watch Lapina again, great look. And Perfetto just goes low over the shoulder of Eric Mueller, the News 12 varsity play of the game. And now time to check in with Amanda, who's standing by with our News 12 varsity player of the game. Amanda? Lou, I'm here with Alex Racanelli, who, by the way, just had his teammates bring him water. So I guess when you are the game-winning goal, you're kind of a big deal here. So walk me through the last 30 seconds of the game, Garden City making that unbelievable comeback, and as you see them coming towards you, what is? Well, how are you preparing for that moment? Yeah, I saw they had the ball. Uh, wasn't a lot of time on the clock. Knew they wanted to come in fast. Um, you know, saw him make the move for Max, and then I was just hoping to find the ball. You know, it threw my foot out there, hit my foot, bounced out, and my teammates got the rebound, and uh, yeah, that's all you can say. Garden City comes into this game, of course, the defending state champs, undefeated, the 135th Woodstick Classic. So what does it mean for you to get the win here on your home field? It means a lot to me. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be on this team for three years now. The past two years, I've been on the sidelines, watching some great goalies and learning from them and taking it all together. So uh, to have the opportunity to be on the field now and actually play it in front of everyone, it's, it's amazing. I'm sure this game, too, was a learning experience for you guys. There's a good chance you'll see each other in the playoffs. So what did you learn and what are you guys going to take from this game as you get ready for the next you know, the next few games. Yeah, we definitely know that uh, number 15, he put the ball in the back of the net as long as number 21. Uh, great players. Um, so we'll know next time we come around that you know, we got to be on them quick. Um, but yeah, we always see each other in the county game and it's always a great game. So uh, we're looking forward to that and uh, you know, definitely be motivated for the rest of the season. All right, Alex, thank you. Thank you. All right, Lou, back to you. All right, Amanda, I think the odds are pretty good these two teams uh, will see each other again <laughs> in the county game. Tremendous game here tonight in the 135th meeting between Manhasset and Garden City. The Indians improved a 10-1 and on the year in hand. Garden City, their first loss of the season as Manhasset wins it by one. That'll do it here from Manhasset High School. Great game here tonight. Hope you enjoyed it here on News 12 Varsity. For Amanda Puglisi, our entire News 12 Varsity team, I'm Lou Brogno. Thanks so much for joining us once again for the oldest continuous high school across rivalry in the nation. Manhasset defeats Garden City by the score of 6-5. to five.